Have you ever wondered who shaped the world of mathematics as we know it? Welcome to 3D Learning Lab. Today, we're diving into the incredible mind of Carl Friedrich Gauss, the prince of mathematicians. From his childhood discoveries to his groundbreaking contributions in algebra, astronomy, and number theory, this is the story of a genius like no other. Get ready for an unforgettable visual journey as we bring his work to life in stunning 3D. Let's explore brilliance together. According to an anecdote, Gauss was only a young schoolboy when he created the formula for summing the members of an arithmetic sequence. As the story goes, his teacher in first grade assigned pupils the task of summing the whole numbers from 1 to 100. Although he hoped this task would keep them occupied for a long time, the young Gauss solved it in a few seconds. The method he used was that, instead of adding up the numbers one after the other, he formed pairs. He added 100 to 1, 99 to 2, 98 to 3, and so on. The sum of the number pairs is always 101, and there are 50 pairs, so the total sum of the 100 numbers is 101 times 50, that is, 50-50. We can use the same method for summing number sequences even if the difference between the numbers is constant, but not 1 and the sequence does not start with 1. Gauss was interested in probability and statistics as well. He realized that random events, such as randomly occurring errors, do have a certain degree of regularity. For example, when land surveyors measure the distance between two towns and carry out the measurement several times in order to obtain an accurate result, they are, unfortunately, always different. The inaccuracy is caused by numerous factors, which sometimes cancel each other out, so the result is relatively accurate. Sometimes, however, they add up and cause a very inaccurate result. But which result is the correct one then? Gauss found that the distribution of measurement data has a regular pattern. When representing the data and their occurrence as a graph, the shape of the resulting curve resembles a bell. This is why the graph depicting the normal distribution is often referred to as the bell curve. There are numerous phenomenons that can be described with this curve, in nature, technology, and society as well. Examples include the distribution of the height of humans, the number of manufacturing defects or the size of apples in orchards. The graph is defined by two parameters, the mean or expected value and the deviation which indicates the range within which 95% of the results are distributed. If the parameters are known, we can accurately predict the percentage of results that are near the expected value and that of the very different results. The formula is seemingly very complex, but there is a device that demonstrates the normal distribution, also known as Gaussian distribution, in a visual way. The device that demonstrates the normal distribution is called the Galton board, or the bean machine. It consists of a vertical board with interleaved rows of pegs. When beads are dropped from the top, they bounce either left or right as they hit the pegs. They are collected into bins at the bottom. The more beads leave the board at a certain spot, the higher the bead column in the bin. The heights of the bead columns accumulated in the bins form a bell curve. The wider the board and more beads are used, the more accurate the curve will be. In 1801, Giuseppe Piazzi, an Italian astronomer, discovered the dwarf planet Ceres. The scientist could track the path of Ceres across three degrees on the sky, but after that, the path was too close to the sun, making it impossible to continue the observation. When it should have reappeared on the other side of the sun, none of the astronomers could find it anymore. Gauss was asked to help solve the problem. At this time, the method of extrapolation was in its infancy. Extrapolation means the reconstruction of a curve from few and, possibly, inaccurate data. The problem is similar to a noisy photo. Insufficient amount of data makes it very difficult to reconstruct the original picture, and even more difficult to extrapolate, that is, to complement it. Gauss developed a method to reconstruct the most probable location of the points of the original curve, or, at least to predict the most probable locations, from the very few and inaccurate data that were available. 
similar calculation methods are still used by engineers to obtain accurate data from inaccurate measurements. Often, these calculations are of vital importance. Denoising photos is also done using similar methods. Extrapolation is easier when the type of the original function is known. In the case of Ceres, Gauss knew that the orbit was elliptical, as celestial bodies orbit the Sun on elliptical orbits unless another celestial body causes them to change their path. Gauss also worked as a land surveyor measured in land survey. The location of geographic objects is determined by triangulation, that is, instead of directly measuring distances, measuring angles. This is because it is easier to precisely measure angles than distance. The location of objects on a map is determined by drawing triangles. The objects to be measured, such as a mountain peak, can be very far, as much as 50 to 100 kilometers away, which makes it difficult to point the protractor exactly towards the objects. As a solution to this problem, Gauss invented the heliotrope, which directs the rays of the sun from the point to be measured to the measuring device, so that the location of the object can be more accurately identified. The surveyor has to find the shiny point in the distance. The heliotrope, from Greek helios plus trapo, meaning sun turner, had remained an important instrument for cartographers until the late of the 20th century when GPS technology was born. A similar instrument, known as the heliograph, was used for communication by sending light signals. It was widely used until the invention of the radio. There are several tools available for constructing regular polygons. These include protractors and computer graphics software, but the result will be only nearly precise. Mathematicians have long been trying to establish exactly which regular polygons can be constructed with the aid of only a compass and a ruler, and whether there are any that are impossible to construct this way. For over 2,000 years, the only regular polygons that were possible to construct using a compass and a ruler were regular triangles, quadrilaterals and pentagons, as well as regular hexagons, octagons, and decagons. Gauss was only 18 years old when he worked out a method to construct a regular heptadecagon, a 17-sided regular polygon. Thank you for joining us on this incredible journey through the work of Carl Friedrich Gauss. If you enjoyed this video, smash the like button and share it with your friends who love learning. Don't forget to comment below and let us know which part amazed you the most. Subscribe to 3D Learning Lab and hit the bell icon to stay updated on our latest videos. Follow us on our social media handles to dive even deeper into the wonders of science and history. See you in the next adventure.